G'day Internet and welcome back to another video and to December. Yes, this is the month where a bunch of us on YouTube celebrate all things MS-DOS related. And if you think that sounds a lot like Septandi, you're right, because it was from the same group of people discussing Septandi over email that the idea for DOS Semba came up. And I think it was actually Clint who came up with the name. So there you go. This here is my Tandy 1000 HX, which for me at least is a bit of a grail computer, uh, primarily because they were never released here in Australia. This is a US import uh, and it's running on a step down transformer down there somewhere. And so it's a machine I didn't think I would ever have the opportunity to own. And thanks to a incredibly generous donation from a viewer, here it is. So. Today what we're going to do is we're going to throw some upgrades at it, uh, which will include how I have a Tandy 1000 running on an LCD. Uh, and following that, we're going to do something that I very, very, very rarely get a chance to do, and that's to actually enjoy the fruits of my labour uh, and play some games on the Tandy 1000. Uh, I say that because I've got a really bad habit of getting through a video project, cleaning everything up, getting everything working, maybe shooting some game footage uh, for the purpose of the video, then it ends up here and I have to move on to the next project or work the next day or whatever it happens to be. So today I'm actually going to spend less time worrying about the hardware upgrades and more time enjoying the machine. So let's get started. This here is my Tandy 1000 HX, pretty much as it arrived. It's got a few little scuff marks on it and such, but nothing really to write home about. Now, the Tandy 1000 HX had 256k of memory on board. This does have the Tandy factory upgrade to 640k, which is nice. But what it doesn't have is any kind of modern storage uh, or internal storage, and it doesn't have a serial port. Now, to fix that, we are going to use this here. This is the Tandy 1000 EX HX 3-in-1 card, designed and built by Robert Kronecki. Um, and it contains uh, a modern uh, memory upgrade, uh, which gives you both the base 640K plus some UMB to play with, uh, a bit like the memory upgrade I put into my Tandy 1000 for Septandi. Uh, it does have a built-in XT to IDE light controller, uh, and finally a serial port to make use of a mouse. And this is really, really easy to install. Right, to get going, all we need to do is slide off the top cover. And here is our factory memory upgrade, which we are going to remove. To do that first, I am going to remove this blanking plate. Get it out of the way. Um, there's normally a couple of screws in here. They seem to be missing. That's fine. And this carefully lifts out of here. Right. That can now go on eBay. And we're left with this, which is looking very empty. Here is our upgrade card. I'll just remove the screws. Now, just a quick thing, when I received this, about the only downside to this entire card was where, so there was no, there's no embedded nut on the back or any kind of thread or whatever. And by the time you get this in there, trying to get a nut on the back and all the rest of it turned out to be a nightmare. But one thing Robert did do is you can probably notice this rather large solder area around the screw here. Well, it's the same on the other side. So I've simply soldered very solidly in the matching nuts for my little screws that I'm using, and now it's a lot easier. So we'll put this in. Uh, I have to be very careful about lining up the pins. That's now in. And where are we? Ah, oh, hang on. The blanking plate needed to go in first. Right, let's try that again. Right, blanking plate. Right. 
Right, we're in. Screws. You will notice that there is already a compact flash card in there. I've already gone ahead and set up DOS 622 on that. If you want to know how to go about that, please check out my Tandy, my previous Tandy 1000 video up there. Uh, and I go through how to set up uh, the expanded RAM, uh, so on and so forth. But you can see we still have a missing blanking plate, which would be nice to fill at this very point in time. And I don't have one. This machine only came with the single one and there was always one missing. But what I do have is a 3D printer and some very rudimentary uh, 3D modeling skills. And well-timed, here is my blanking plate. Now, if you want, if you're in the same boat as me and missing one and you would like me to make this STL file available, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, and a quick hunt around for some semi-appropriate screws. This should go just mount in here. There's our blanking plate and this should just go straight back on. And we're good. It's now all completely closed up at the back and we have our compact flash and our serial port and obviously considerably more RAM inside. Now, before I power this up, allow me to explain the elephant in the room and that is how I have a Tandy 1000 plugged into a modern LCD. And it is simply this. Uh, this is a nicely manufactured one, but essentially this is the RGB to HDMI project, which you can find on GitHub. It's an open source project. And what it does is is a hat that sits with a uh, Pi Zero that sits on top. And what the software does is you can load a bunch of different profiles into it. Um, there's profiles for the BBC Micro. Um, a mate of mine, Ingmar, has written one for the Micro B, which I'll be showing off next month, hopefully. Uh, and it also does CGA and TGA. Uh, basically, anything that uses digital TTL can be pumped through this. And what the software does is it actually uses the GPU on, um, on the Pi to do all the conversion and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and reports say there's about three frames of lag, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but I can tell you that for the games that I generally play on this, which is basically the Sierra games, uh, they're not exactly Twitch games, so a couple of frames is not going to make any difference to me. Um, I'll put a link in the description where I actually bought this one. I didn't make it, but you can make your own. Um, it's from uh, Derek, and uh, yeah, link in the description. He's on Tindy. You can buy it from there if you simply just want to buy one. So with everything now plugged back in, let's turn it on. We get our 640K, thanks to the uh, memory expansion on Robert's card. Uh, and like I said, it also gives us uh, a bit of um, UMB as well. You will see the XT to IDE BIOS boot and Windows Start, followed by ClearMem and DOSMAX, et cetera, exactly the way I did on my other machine. It's just some of the addresses are a little different. That's about it. And we're booted in. Um, and if I wanted to, I can simply now go to um, and let's spark up my old favorite Space Quest 3, and we're in. Uh, the image is nice and crispy, thanks to that RGB to HDMI Pi device. Um, and one of the main benefits for, well, us in this video is that I can capture from that from my crappy Elgato HD60. So let's actually enjoy some games instead of just, you know, watching the Sierra boot screen. So let's actually spend some time enjoying some games on this computer because it's something I very, very rarely get a chance to actually do. And I want to kick it off simply with Prince of Persia because it's a game that I simply just like.
for me, Prince of Persia is just one of those games that I really enjoy. Uh, look, it's a platformer, but there's just that little bit more kind of got going for it. Whoop. Okay, I didn't actually mean to do that. And it just looks fantastic with the Tandy graphics and it doesn't even play too badly with the Tandy joystick either. Now, obviously, I really like my Sierra Adventure games. They're the computer games that I really grew up with. So King's Quest, Space Quest, Police Quest, Leisure Suit Larry, for good and bad. Um, but King's Quest is probably the most famous of them, and it's one that I really enjoy. And the ta again, the Tandy graphics and sound really do make it. It's certainly a big step up from CGA and PC beeping speaker. Now, I have to be completely honest, these days, instead of finding my way through the dark like I did as a kid, I'm actually more likely to play games like this or Monkey Island or whatever with a walkthrough because I just simply, I enjoy the story, um, going places, picking stuff up. Um, it's, look, it's something that I enjoy um, and that's how I tend to play these games these days. Now, I don't have a walkthrough in front of me at the moment, unfortunately, but I do kind of know how to get started. Well, I kind of remember how to get started in this game, at least. Now, I may be the most uncoordinated, unathletic person in the world, but occasionally I do like to play a sports game. Uh, and most of the time that will be a golf game of some description. And for this era of computer, PGA is certainly one of the better ones. Um, all we need to do is get past this. So we're looking for uh, hole 17 at Sawgrass. And we're into the pro shop. There's a bunch of stuff you can do here, but when I'm just feeling lazy, honestly, I tend to just hit the driving range. At least just kind of get my eye in a little if I haven't played for a while. 
but eventually that does get boring. And we can go back to the pro shop. And we'll go, we'll just do a practice round. Number of players, one, human, uh, new player. Oh, got to give myself a name. Uh, keep it easy. Um, these normally tend to be fairly good. And let's go play at PGA West. No particular reason. We've got a bit of a right to left wind. Oh, it just, okay, it's all over the place. But for safety's sake, I'm going to push it a little to the right and go for gold. Oh, I think we sliced that a little. Good thing I did kind of push it to one side. PGA Golf is actually, it isn't too hard. It doesn't slaughter you for just being like a couple of pixels off center. Uh, so we've got 123 yards. Um, we've got a wind behind us. So I probably want to pull this short, but I don't want to end up in that bunker. So I'm just going to go a little to the left. And I managed to put it onto the green. Nice. So one very last game I want to play is one that I used to love as a kid on our L286, and that's Ivan Stewart's Super Off-Road, which does have Tandy graphics support. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Tandy sound support, so you kind of just have your beeper. This is just one of these nice, simple games. You don't have to think too much about it. And it's just one of those games that's good fun. Now, admittedly, it is better in... Come on, accelerate. Right. Joystick's playing up. This is just one of those games that's just nice and easy to play. You don't have to think too much. But it is a, it's a really great game multiplayer. So if you've got some friends around and a couple of joysticks, this is definitely one that you and some friends can have some proper fun with. I'm sure there's a drinking game involved here somewhere. So there we go, there is my Tandy 1000 HX. It's uh, managed to get a couple of small upgrades which have made life a little easier. Uh, it is nice to be able to take this machine and put it into a modern LCD, not only so I can capture the HDMI, but it's also a lot easier to capture on camera as opposed to a CRT as well. Now, what I'm really happy about is the fact that I actually had some time to play some games. I have not played Super Off-Road since I was a kid, uh, and I'm not going to quite admit to how long I ended up sitting just here playing after I hit stop on the camera. It was a little while. So I'm really happy about that. Now, a lot of people are probably going to jump up and down, especially when or any of us do this kind of video and kind of go, oh, it's not all about the games. But honestly, with the Tandy 1000, the whole point of having those Tandy graphics and sound, it is for the games. I'm sorry, but it just is. And this here is a perfect example of that kind of machine uh, and one that I'm incredibly happy and honestly lucky to have in my collection. But for now, that will do. 
that brings to an end my first DOS Semba video. Uh, please take the time to check out all the other creators who are making content for DOS Semba. All the links are down in the description. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, I am now on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, and that will pretty much do it. If you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.